Oh, can I can I get screen sharing powers, please? Oh, of course. Uh, seems like oh no, there we go. All participants. Okay. You should have yep, that I capacity. Got it now. Awesome. So welcome to the report centers group. We are here with Andrea von Steeman, who is uh, going to show us the uh, the development that's been done on the Angular reports interface. And I'm very excited to uh, to turn the reins over to her. So please take it away, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, wanted to confirm that everyone can see my screen. You should be looking at an evergreen sign in window. All right, um, and let me arrange my things. Zoom, why do you hate me? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log in here as uh, as a system administrator, just so I don't have to run into any permissions issues. Um, this is a test server, this butternut.evergreencatalog.com um, is one that we stood up uh, for uh, bug squashing week. And it will be up through the end of April um, to continue to look at reports. And thank you to those of you who have given feedback. And um, so far, Mike was not, uh, I don't think he's able to be here for this call, but we did talk about it and we're going to, I responded on the ticket and then we're also going to address what we can there. Um, let's see. And, oh, I guess maybe I should introduce myself a slightly bit more. I always assume that everybody knows who I am, but in case you don't know who I am, as Jessica said, I'm Andrea Bunsenyman, but relative to this, uh, I am the project manager for software development at Equinox Open Library Initiative. And this is um, a piece of development that we did that was sponsored by King County Library uh, in Washington State. And this is um, personally really uh, awesome, in my opinion, because I have been working with Evergreen since 2008, like the 1.6 era. And me and the reports interface have always, um, I've always just not gotten along with it. So I'm really, really excited to be able to, you know, help bring this to the community. And I hope that you guys like it too. And um, like I said, if you have any feedback, you know, we would, we would love to hear that. And um, let me go ahead and link the bug in the chat. And um, with me today is also my colleague, Stephanie Leary, who is part of our development team as front end developer. And Stephanie is going to be uh, making note of feedback that you guys give us here live and in person. So we'll track on that as well. All right. So that's the introductory matter. Um, let me go ahead and log in. So this is like all test service. This is just loaded with Concerto. Um, and uh, here is the shiny new Angular reports interface. Um, looks, you know, all modern and not at all like the old one. However, we have not changed a lot of the underlying functionality. Um, hopefully what we've been able to do is make it easier to use. Um, again, brought it up into a more modern web interface. And there's a couple of little uh, quality of life improvements that you'll see me demo here. Um, and then they will, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's mostly the same main structure. We didn't change like that three folder structure. Um, we didn't change the uh, basic formula of a template and then from which you can create reports and then the reports generate outputs. We didn't really change much of the underlying logic, although there is a related project to this, which is report security uh, funded by the BC Libraries Cooperative, uh, where we did process. do some underlying uh was Casey that... honest? They didn't even bother to ask us what we needed. Excuse me. Was there a question? <laughs> Sorry, I thought I heard something. Um. Anything. Anyway. So the uh, report security work uh leverages a uh, much more complicated kind of. Uh, backend logic to redact rows or um, to protect certain table joins where you would not want um, certain staff to be able to see that. So let's say if you had staff at one branch, you don't want them to be able to see patron data um, related to another branch there. Uh, the report security work allows you to make those implement those changes. But I'm not talking about that today, um, partly because it's 
quite complicated. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to show you the basic uh, report stuff. So here's, like I said, the main interface. We do have um, the browse, which will let you browse through your folders and the shared folders, which you can see those here. Um, and then, you know, you can still have the uh, search av availability that was in the old uh, interface as well to search the templates. So um, in templates, you know, we have, it's a lovely little angular grid. You've got all the angular grid stuff, like you can click to sort and um, you've got right click actions, you've got buttons, you've got your column stuff. So this is pretty familiar to anyone who's used an angular interface before. Um, one of the things that we added here uh, is this uh, report list. Uh, and there's also one of these for output list, uh, which I'll show in a minute. So what this does is it just gives you a one click way to see all of the reports that are based on that template. So this is my template item count distinct. And then these are my two reports. And, you know, please ignore those timestamps that show you that I created these examples about 90 minutes ago. <laughs> it's been a week, you guys. Um, so there's, um, let's see, right click actions. Oh yeah, so that's that's report list. So that's just a little way to see all of those. Again, this is a demo system. These are tiny examples, but if you had a whole lot of these, you know, you can um, sort them, you can filter them because that's all again, angular grid goodness. So it makes it much easier to see what you've got um, related Andrew. to templates. Yeah. Um, so for the uh, reports list, will it uh -huh. show other runners uh, who are using my template as Wait well or that was the question that came up at a previous demo and i had answered it and now i forgot what the answer is stephanie could you write that down and i'll go look up what my old answer was because i don't remember off the top of my head okay um, thanks just yeah. from like a support standpoint you know when somebody's like i can't delete this template it would be helpful to be like well so and so is also using this template right, right. so okay Thank you. Sure. Um, and I'm going to come back to templates here. Um, and I also wanted to show you the uh, delete action, which you can do. You can delete uh, a template, which you can do now with the correct permissions. Um, and if, you know, I will say I wanted to delete this template, it says, sure, but do you want to delete this template and its reports and output? Because that is what will happen. Um, so you do get that warning. I don't want to actually delete it. And you can do this multi-select as well. So you can delete these two templates. Um, but that's just all things that you can do in the grid now, as opposed to having to select things and then come up and select something from the dropdown, like in the old interface. So we're going to um, create a report. I'm going to use this clone of the CERC report. And if you didn't notice, I just double clicked. Um, you can also like right click or use a regular action, but I just double clicked on the template and it takes you to this uh, new report definition. So, Ooh, so um, like anybody who has permission to clone will, if they double click, will get into the cloning interface. No, this is not a clone interface. This is a new report. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was double clicking from the template line and that took me into this, into this new report. It, it's sorry. It's, thank you. The template itself was a clone. I'm sorry for not. No, 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 no. I, I, I got, uh, I got all turned around. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. It's so, and please do, if anyone has any questions, I know this looks like a lot of new stuff and it does look very different but it works the same way and i've been working in this new interface now for a couple of months and i recognize that i am a lot more familiar uh with this than m pretty much all of you with the exception of stephanie and maybe my colleague lena hernandez who did an amazing job with the documentation and of course mike rylander who also uh who did the you know back end work on this but um, if I'm going too fast, if something looks weird, you know, please just pop up a question. Um, and yes, Deborah, this is slated for 313, um, but that depends on community merging um, and approval. And so the more testing and feedback that you guys give us on this, um, the more likely it is that it will get in. So um, when you open a new report from a template, you will notice there's these three columns. And when I create a new report from scratch, um, you know, you'll, we'll see this, but 
or what new template rather, but this starts you on the filters uh, column or the filters tab because the columns tab is already set. So you can still go back and see what columns you have, but you can't change these. These are all disabled because that was set in the template just like it is today. So you can't change the column selection um, in a report because that's set in the template. Um, you can, however, set the filters, which is what you know we're going to do here. So we've got filter. Let's see, we're going to do filters between, let's see, 203, let's do a year, 203 to 2304. So that's our going to be our checkouts between those two dates. And then we can, this pretty little tree we can use to select um, the checkout or renewal library that we're going to use. So I already have one for BR2 and BR1. So let's do BR3 and BR4. So this is going to show us um, a count of items renewed between um, at each branch between uh, those two dates. So that's uh, our filters. And then we come to layout and scheduling. Um, this is, we're going to pick our report and output folders. And then I'm just going to save it. And we're now going to be able to see it. I'm going to come down here to outputs. We have this uh, grid here that shows us our pending and complete. And you can refresh grids. And there it is. Yay, it worked. Um, click on the link. Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> Maybe there weren't any BR3 or BR1 checkouts uh, in that time period. Well, here, I'll show you one that worked. I was just getting ready to say, you know, I escaped the dark demon of product demos. Anyway, here's one I ran earlier for branch two, and you can see that it has um, some uh, the checkout, you know, date time. So on um, March 3rd this year, example branch two had 16 checkouts on February 16th, example branch two had 17 checkouts. So that's, you know, your out output for that. Um, sorry if you just heard a crash. I'm not sure what that was, but hopefully uh, nothing broke. Anyway, um, so that shows you um, your output. And again, this is kind of all the outputs in my ABN folder. And um, I'm going to pause there and look at the uh, chat here. Has it been suggested to have the filter auto select the logged in workstation? The org unit for the logged in workstation. The Do way you mean that's what in, I meant. Um, the org unit list? Yes. Um, no. But the uh, tree will be expanded by default. If that answers your question. Um, I do think, especially for the big consortia, having it auto-selected, especially if the tree is uncollapsed, would be very helpful. <laughs> no, the tree will be will be open. Like yeah, that. that's that's can, what that's I what can... I mean. Like, um, you know, for example, if I'm at mm -hmm. the Woolcott Library and my library is like way down at the bottom of the list, like it would be helpful for me to have that auto-selected. Sure, we can we can look into that. It's a little bit of a different mechanism, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure if we can do that, but we'll make a note of that and see what we can do. Thank you. Um, I see that Beth has actual SQL. Yes, you can get that here in the I so what I did is I I it's I did not have this column selected in my view, but I just added it. So the debugging output, and then you click there. And in the debugging output, that's where you can see. Um, the actual SQL and the template and all of that where you, you would see it uh, before. Um, and also, if you click the CSV one, you get, you know, oh, wait, well, not not that one, because that's the one we did. We'll do this one. Um, and then you can get, where did Excel open up? Which monitor? Here we go. You can get the CSV output. Okay. So, so. Okay. Any other, has the SQL generation logic been changed with this? No, um, it has not. 
All right. Okay. Sorry, I have a quick concern then. Um, so I used to notice like sometimes when I tried like filtering by uh, like is not null, whenever the SQL is generated, it would uh, come out as is not null or is null. And like that is or null would be attached to every category. So. I'd... Is that an existing bug that you know of that you could point me at? Because that is something that is beyond my ability to answer off the cuff. But if okay. you can point me to an existing bug or, you know, something, uh, something where I can see an example of that, I can get certainly get back to you. Okay, I'll I'll go about uh, filing one of those if it doesn't exist then. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I just that's not. I'm a, um not a developer. I'm a project manager. So. <laughs> oh no, you're you're, you're all good. <laughs> I can't uh just do that off the cuff. But I see that Taryn says that she's seen that happen as well. So if somebody can point me to bug or an example, I'd, I'd be more than happy to look into that. But we have not altered that with this work. So let's see. <clears throat> oh, somebody found a bug. Let's look at the bug. Is that the bug? That sounds like it might be the bug. Um, and Taryn says it looks like it should break everything, but it hasn't. Well, you know, that's yeah, I think like this things is that break that don't really break. I think this is not quite it because I think I know what he's saying. It, it's um, it's like uh, there's some logic in there, and I think it has something to do with the way that the tables are joined. Uh -huh. Um, you know, where it's saying if, if you put in a filter that says I want this to only be null, but then there's also a filter built into the logic where it says um you know is not null or is null. <laughs> um yeah but i think nullability might help with that but um it should i'm gonna talk about yeah. nullability yeah cool so <laughs> i will uh, also say that it is a fair uh, assessment that probably everyone in this interest group um knows more about uh reports than i than i do like in terms of the guts and the day by day so i will um you know uh, defer to you all on, on these things. Um, oh, yes, and that's my eligibility example. Mm. Right there. Excuse me. Uh huh. <clears throat> Was there another question? Sorry. Um, okay. Um, Susan, I see your question in the chat. Is it possible to see debugging from reports we didn't run? Um, how do you mean that we didn't run? Do you mean from another login or, um, yes, sorry. Um, we usually look at, uh, you know, if the library staff is having trouble, um, with their report, um, they'll send us the link and it used to have the debugging info in there. Um, so we would look at that. Um, so yeah, sorry, reports that we ourselves did not run. And so that wouldn't be, I guess, in our, you know interface you can certainly do that from the database side but let me double check about the interface and and get back to you on that one thank um, you yeah but no it's, it's definitely still available from um the database i don't know what the error text is using so okay yeah i see what you're asking um and yeah, that may just be a case of we just ask for another way of them to show us how they ran the report. So not a big deal. Yeah, the, the key data in this grid that you're going to want from them is run ID. So that that's what, when, when I was breaking things uh, right before this demo with uh, my wild reports, this um, is the that's what the ID is. Oh, duh, you mean this thing. Oh, yes. Okay, okay it's so there. sorry. <laughs> I got, I'm not, there sorry, were so I'm many questions that I lost my that I got off of my outline and that is actually on my outline my apologies yes um so you double click uh we're instruct your staff to double click on the line and then they can give you this url and that of course has the template id the report id and the run id in the url and you can also you know see that and yeah Okay, yeah, sorry, I completely missed that debugging info link. So thank you. No, it's not actually, that's actually different. 
So the yeah. debug just gives you the debug. Mm -hmm. But if you double click on um, the report line itself, that's what takes you to this is what I think you're looking for because it gives you that that URL with the encoded information in it, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. And yeah. If you do if you do right click and view output from the same line, that's what that gets you as well. So that's has not changed from its um, current iteration, except the font is now not tiny. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so that that has not changed. We've just made it a little more legible. Okay. Okay. Um, let me. Any other questions before I um, before I go on? Oh, and the damp cat has returned. Great. Your timing is perfect. All right. Please get off my keyboard. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the reports folder here, uh, my ABN reports folder, um, and show you what happens when I double click that. And you get this output uh, list. So this is just like the report list that you could get from templates, only this is output. Um, so although let me actually show you one that has multiple things. Um, there we go. So you can see that um, I earlier today ran two instances of this report, strict report clone, um, and they are both tied to that report. So it's just showing you what those all are. And just like, um, and everywhere you see the output grid, you'll have these refresh single or refresh all, um, which will just refresh the grid. So if you only want to refresh the one grid, you know, it will uh, show it and or you can refresh both of them. Um, there's nothing pending here. It's just showing you um, these two that are complete. So that's another little, one of those little minor quality of life things. So back to the reports folder. Um, again, from this grid, you can do the regular things that you would think of being able to do. Um, you can also clone a report or edit a report. And we did separate these actions intentionally. Um, so edit the report. Uh, is the same kind of edit report action that you have now where you edit it and you save it and all future iterations of that report, like all future runs of that report, then use that edited template. Whereas cloning the report, um, it's just like cloning a template, only it takes like the report values and gives you an editable version of the report. So if you want to like, you know, keep the original report, um, but then clone one with maybe a different regularity period or something like that. That lets you do both mm. of those things. So that's also a new So that replaces the edit report and then like the option to uh, either save as new or Yeah, it save just brings, changes. It, it, brings yeah. it to the front of that yeah, workflow instead of That's nice. Exactly. Yep. But it's the same idea, but it just, you just choose it up front, whether you want to edit it and save or create a new one. So that was another intentional change that we made. And this is how you get, um, other than double click, this is how you get to the, the output list action from this grid too. And that shows you that list of things related to the that report that I just showed you. Okay, any questions about that? Right. Who wants to create a template? It's gonna be an easy template. Because I don't want to embarrass myself in front of the reports interest group. <laughs> so. I was actually going to ask you to create a list one because I was having trouble with that. And I think it might just be because I don't know the concerto data as well as I ought to. <laughs> I did not write down an example to do that. Okay. I'll try. I will try again later. <laughs> okay. Um, if I can figure it out, I will uh, send out an example of that. Because like I said, this... Um, I mean, I can figure it out, but I don't want to sit here for, you know, several minutes and try to figure it out during the meeting. That, that's fair. I enough. can send an example to the reports uh, list, though. Um, and like I said, this this Butternut test server will be up through the end of April, uh, through April 30th. Um, it will have reports on it. It will have any changes and uh, updates that we make to the reports branch uh, as we make them. 
as you guys give us feedback. Um, so this will be available for people to use. Um, and yeah, we're we're really looking for reports of those issues. Ha ha, see what I did there? Sorry. Um, anyway, but we're going to create a simple template because um, that is uh, one that I, I am certain that I personally can can execute without uh, blowing up. And now that I've said that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and knock on wood. So let's create a new template. I'm going to create a count template because they're much easier than list templates. Um, and I'm going to see, we're going to do all non-deleted users. And for the source, I'm going to pick ILS user. Um, and we see that here is where we do our field picking and um, our table picking. So this is the main table. Everything underneath of it is um, a linked table. I will talk about the checkboxes. There were these checkboxes uh, on this left side related to nullability. I will talk about that next because um, I'm not doing nullability <laughs> this template because that seemed like a good way to get myself into a weird corner. Um, so for this, the source is ILS user. Um, this is, by the way, also the new EG tree component. So wherever there is a tree uh, in Evergreen, you know, this is now available for all of those. Um, it's in, you know, custom org unit trees, permission groups, things like that. So this is our shiny, new, uh, keyboard friendly, accessible uh, EG tree component that that um, is is lovely, and we love it. All right, so there's no nullability here, though, so we're not going to worry about these checkboxes for now. But what I want to do for user counts is I want to get user ID, which of course is all the way here at the bottom. I'm going to check that and it pops up here. Now, if you have used the simple reports interface, this is going to look pretty familiar. And that's because we did intentionally to uh, reduce effort and therefore cost reuse um, these components where we could uh, from simple reports. So uh, a couple things here, if you want to change the name of the column, as it displays, you can. Um, here's your transforms. Supply hint is the new uh, column documentation. So this is where you'd put things for people to see. And I do want this to be a count transform because, well, I'm having it count. And then I want it to filter over here by undeleted. Or yeah, I want to filter out the deleted users. So this will show you which fields you have selected for display, their display name that you entered in that box, as well as the uh, help text. So this is just sort of a little hint to show you what you're going to be displaying while you're selecting your filters. And in this case, I'm going to select is deleted and of course, uh, you can supply a hint here as well if you want. And you can also, as in the past, choose to supply a filter value. So I want is deleted to be false. So that will show me only the undeleted users. And it will show you, uh, so this gives you like kind of your path up here. Oh, I forgot to say it over there. This gives you your path over here too. So, um, and if you do something more kind of complicated, you know, it'll give you the full path underneath there as well. So that will keep keep track of that, tell you where you are, where that field is coming from. Um, and then we come over here to the layout tab. Um, one new thing that we've added, stolen from simple reports, is the ability to um, specify sort order ahead of time. So um, you can there's only one field here, so it doesn't matter. So you can have independently set a display order and a sort order. So if you want it to sort differently, then by column ascending left to right, um, you can do that. Now you can specify sort on individual columns and it will have multiple lines for each, like one line for each column and you can move those independently up and down. So that is our very, very basic template. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to pause here because I saw a couple of things go by in the chat. Oh, yes, love the path display. Yes. Um, 
Yes, and thank you, Stephanie, for pointing out that the path does show you um, where you are. It keeps that that information the same, even regardless of where you name the field. Okay. All right. So we have a template. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna double click to create my new report. And again, like I said, it it starts you on the filters tab. Um, in this case, we don't have any filter data to change because it's a preset filter. So I'm just going to either either click next or layout and scheduling. Come here to layout, pick my folders. And these are all, by the way, the same options that are currently available. Pivoting, um, there is not any pivotable data uh, in this very simple report. So that's not presented as an option. Um, but you have these output calculate grouping subtotals, recurring report, you know, um, run and schedule uh, options and email like you do um, now. So those are all exactly the same as they were. Save. Um, and let's come here to outputs. And you can see that this is pending. Um, let's refresh screen. Do, 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 do. This is a demo system, so it's not like as heavily resourced as a regular system. There we go. So there's our user count. Um, and as you notice, this sorts by uh, finish time automatically um, descending. And then if we come over here, here's our user count. We've got 244 non-deleted users in this in this test database. So that is a really, really simple uh, report. Haha, in the regular reports. So you can... Um, I already showed you the ability to move and delete outputs uh, or to delete outputs, but moving them is the same. You can uh, move them, you know, to a different folder that you have access to. Um, I can only have one output folder uh, in here in it, and I cannot move it to the uh, other shared one. But um, let's see, let me check the chat. Any questions? All right, before I make a, a brave attempt to explain nullability to the reports experts, um, <laughs> or at least the re-implementation of nullability. Are there any uh, questions about the basic interface itself? I had a question about the larger up and down arrows. Like you see them above mm -hmm. templates, about, above reports, and above outputs. Yep. Um, oh. So are they just to like collapse? Their show, and so, it's not showing it because there isn't a subfolder, um, but what these will do is show and collapse all. So if there were a subfolder under templates here, I can let me see if I can do that. So now, you know, that's to show the top folders, or I can do that to fully expand the tree. That's the difference. It's just show and collapse one level versus show and collapse all. And that's okay. for each one. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I just visually for me, I'm I got a little lost. So okay. I just without seeing the yeah the full the full complement of the functionality. Okay. Yeah. And I will I did make a note of that from the original feedback on Launchpad, which might have actually even been yours. I can't remember now. To put that to add that to the documentation. Okay. Um and yeah. But uh, we'll make a note of that and see if we can make that a little bit more distinctive. Although if you do hover, um, oh, here, okay. it'll show yes. expand all, collapse all, close tree branch underneath templates. You know, so it gives you it gives you like little breadcrumbs, and those are all thanks to Stefan. So yeah, okay, yeah. I think those, but I can I see think where... people will like them more though than the like the green arrow. <laughs> people always miss that green arrow, so I think this will be helpful. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you uh, for the feedback. All right. Any um, other questions before I show you the new implementation of nullability? All right. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through this, um, but I just wanted to show you an example. Um, then this is based on the example and documentation which uh, is linked from the Launchpad bug and is uh, was put together by my colleague, Lena Hernandez. She did a really great job on it. It is in ASCII doc, um, but it is still like parse human parsable. Um, and you can of course grab the branch and 
put it up somewhere yourself um, if you want to look at it. But she did um, a complete. Thank you, you know, very much. I appreciate that. I knew you had to have mentioned something. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, we uh, do documentation with all of our work. Um, and in this case, you know, uh, I got to shout out Lena again because she did it in ASCII doc with Git, like, just sort of like went straight up that mountain. <laughs> like, I, it took me like years to do that. I was like writing stuff and converting stuff and whatever. She's like, nope, I'm just going to go and do it. And she did a great job. And, um, you know, it was a probably a little bit of a baptism by fire, but um, it resulted in some great documentation and that's ready to, you know, be merged if, if and when this is merged. So, um, all right. So, and in the documentation, um, the example that she gives for nullability is uses the shelving location. Um, and so, you know, I'm not actually going to save this. Oh, Lena, you're on the call. <laughs> I actually had no idea that Lena was here. I can only see the chat window because I'm screen sharing. Anyway, it's all true. No regrets. So, I'm going to use uh, her example, which starts with the shelving location source, which is not a core source. We've got it all the way down here to find the source. What is the alphabet even? So we're going to use shelving location, right? And um, the fields that we're going to select to display are um, name, which is actually the shelving location. And then over here, we're going to come to copies and select copy ID. Or wait, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to select copies and we're going to check that box copy ID and see how this now says copies required. Okay, so this is setting copies as as nullable. So selecting that copies checkbook checkbox is going to tell this template, do not include data from this copies table. If that child table, the copies table um, is null. So that is that is what that is instructing it to you. So that is the new implementation of nullability. And what that results in, if that is checked, is again, stealing from Lena's example in the documents, this is what you will get on the right is what you would get with the nullability checkbox. On the left is what you would get without checking that nullability checkbox. So you would get a line in the report that just doesn't have any value in it because there's no item counts. Um, and then over here, you would have, you know, your, your join excuse me, you're uh, with the nullability, it's going to leave that out. So that's what that is doing. And I probably explained that really poorly. Um, but I, I followed. <laughs> awesome. Well, you're, you're, the null, you're like the nullability expert. Like I have to, I kind of refresh myself on your um, presentation, like multiple times a year. I just. Oh, well, well, thank you. <laughs> Even um, I have to do that. Uh, so, <laughs> but this seems like it makes it a lot cleaner. Like it's not so many options. It's like, hey, is it nullable? Yes or no. As opposed to, well, is it parent nullable? Is it child nullable? Right. All of that stuff. So that's that's really that's really good, I think. Cool. Well, I'm glad that, that it has your your benediction. Um, I will. I put my stamp of approval on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I have to refresh myself on my holds presentation multiple times a year, too. <laughs> sometimes sometimes those are the best kinds of presentations where you have to force yourself to do a deep dive on something you don't really understand just so that you can understand it and create like that reference yeah. material for yourself and then you're here, like oh here here is my myself. brain dump on this particular <laughs> topic <laughs> um let's see elizabeth we no longer have to decide which kind of join um so oh that's a really good question yeah like, that that's what i mean by like you don't have to I decide think. if it's a parent or a child uh nullable yeah yeah um let me read. This is okay. Here. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, Lena. Oh, she copied it and pasted it faster than I did. Um, that ugly looking link will also take you to the line uh in in the document and the documentation um that says that exact same thing. So thank you, Lena. I'm afraid of nullability, partly because I don't super totally understand it. Um, it feels like it's just beyond my grasp, like I should understand it. Okay, so, but I'm not going to 
walk all the way through that because I wanted to give you guys um, a chance to ask any other questions um, or comments. Thank you all very much for the questions and comments you've given so far. Um, like I said, there's a lengthy response from me. It's from mostly from Mike's brain that I wrote it, um, that I posted last night on the Launchpad bug. And once we have um, squashed the ones that we said we're going to squash in that list, uh, I'll update the Launchpad, or Mike will update the Launchpad bug. And, you know, it'll be available here for continued testing and feedback. So. actions menu button, removing it away from being spelled out to the graphic. Um, you mean these as opposed to, you mean like that? That, yeah. that one. This is on the some... Angular implementation oh. and the labeled um, one, I believe is Angular JS. I am not, Thanks. I'm not completely certain that. No, that's, that's right. Is that correct? Okay. Quick, somebody name an Angular JS interface. Um, let's see. Oh, let's search for patrons. Um, right. Oh, that's a bad example. <laughs> yeah, doesn't have any actions. Darn it. Okay. Well, uh, search for there we go. Yeah. So, so just to clarify for. Uh, this is what Elizabeth is talking about. That this is the actions drop down. This is the Angular JS and Angular JS interface, which is a different framework than this Angular interface. Um, once you've stared at these a lot, you can see that they're they're different, but it is kind of subtle. It has to do with the styling of the buttons, um, the availability of these grid filters and things like that. Um, but yes, that's. That, that is the new implementation of the action button, and it's kind of the standard Angular grid thing. I don't recall if we have a bug about that. If there are people who would like to see that button say actions again in Angular, but let me post a related bug uh, where I discuss that a little bit. One second. Can I ask questions while Stephanie's uh, yeah, go for doing it. that? I'm, I'm, um, you got me for the next 11 minutes. All right, cool. Um, so I just have some like practical questions and this might be for the group, not necessarily for you, Andrea, but um, uh, I was just wondering if anybody has um, tested this or is planning to test it with like real world data yet. But if you know, Andrea, I'm, I'm Happy to. I would listen. be delighted to have somebody test this <laughs> with real world data, um, but not till we push the latest fix. Right. But yeah, no, I, I would really be thrilled. I know that um, that some of the larger systems have access to their own test systems that they spin up and do that kind of testing, and I would be very, very appreciative of any real world data testing that they could do because um, really, like the majority of this testing has just been in concerto so yeah yeah please if you can do that please do it um and i i guess my second que question about this is like i know sometimes when we do a um you know full rewrite of an interface like it's available as a like experimental thing for a little while and then you know it kind of gets phased into actual, uh, you know, replacing the the previous interface. Is there a plan to do that with this or is it just going to be like we're, we're phasing out the reporter entirely and replacing it with the Angular interface? I don't know if that's been decided. I've just thrown it out there. <laughs> We discussed that in development, and if I remember correctly, it is not oh gosh, super so feasible. I was to have sorry, I was completely talking with the mute button on. Um, but Stephanie, please go ahead. 
sorry, and then I muted myself. Um, I If I'm remembering our discussions correctly, and they were six months ago, so I may be wrong, but uh, I believe Mike felt that it wasn't very feasible to have both of these um, interfaces active. So I think, I'll have to double check on this, but I think we're proposing to completely get rid of the old reporter yeah, and replace it with this one. It's effectively that it was beyond, it would have, to do so would have actually made the work much more uh, complicated, extensively complicated, uh, and it was beyond the scale of what we had been contracted to do. Um, so yeah, we do intend this as a full replacement. Um, you know, that is, of course, up for community discussion. And if somebody, you know, the branches are out there, if somebody wants to try running them side by side, um, I, but yeah, I would have to get Mike to give the actual technical reason for it, but yes, our intention is a full replacement. So. Thank you. And I guess I, I had kind of assumed that the answer to Taryn's question that she just put in chat was yes, but, but, uh, I would like to hear the answer to that as well. <laughs> the answer to Taryn's question is yes. Excellent. Although, although. <laughs> Uh, I should feel like this is because it's pines. I should issue this caveat. If you all got still got templates hanging around from like 2006, <laughs> you know, you probably won't be able to clone them. You might run into issues trying to clone them because this does introduce a new uh, template uh, version um, beyond the what's currently in the in the web client for templates. So you know. The, the moral of the story is don't clone templates from uh, 2006. Or yeah, don't don't clone templates from Zool. Um, and yes, Taryn, I do remember that the early templates did stop working when we went to the web client and we had to create like a transla translator kind of thing. Like it was, it was a way to clone those old templates from version like four or whatever to version six. And I think we're now on version seven. Um, so yeah well that it, gives me a lot of uh, motivation to clean up our templates <laughs> before should, we upgrade <laughs> yeah and it should also this is also where it would be great to have you know a long-standing and uh technically gifted staff like pines uh take this for a whirl on your own server if you guys have the bandwidth to do that because um that would be a, a question that that's one of those kind of real data questions that it's hard to answer in the abstract But yes, good good question. And yeah, this does actually make it easier to clean out old templates simply because, you know, you can filter for them. You can, you know, see like a hundred of them if you have a hundred of them. Whereas right now in the, it's not actually a Dojo interface. It's like this bespoke HTML xml thing the current reports um oh yeah did you show the search sorry <laughs> i didn't i thought i can it, it, that hasn't really changed any um so um it, except it doesn't you know but it shows the folder and that's mm -hmm. that's a big improvement <laughs> yeah and the owner so yeah. mm, love that and it's like my dreams came true <laughs> yeah well, so many so many report bugs will be able to be won't fixed or already fixed <laughs> yeah i have a list of some of them but i'm sure that i will not i'm sure that i don't have all of them so that'll be the kind of thing um but you know when this gets merged it would be great to have the the rigors go through and um you know if you've got a pet a pet uh reports bug that you can verify is no longer a, a bug in the new interface. It would be great. I have, so, I have a menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> How am I not surprised by this? <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions are coming up to the top of the hour? Um, yeah, I'm very happy about the filtering too. Uh, Taryn, and that's um, 
it was I think Gail and Charlton who did that work several iterations ago initially as part of the angular act stuff um but it's gonna it's just gonna be so useful for um for reports because as you know after a few years you end up with like hundreds and thousands of things and it's going to be much easier to find those old things now as opposed to what you do now which is like you have the search function but you know if you can't remember what to search for or if your search is turning and not turning up what you expect it to you just have to page and page and page and page through the interface All right, anything anything else? Okay, um, I'm gonna drop my email in the chat if anybody has any burning questions, but they uh, just wanna ask uh, privately. Make sure I spelled my email address right. Um, that's me, I'm happy to answer your questions, um, you know, and I will follow up uh, probably on the bug, so it's not just on the reports interest group list uh, with some of the questions that were asked today. Um, and yeah, thank you all for attending, for testing. Thank for you. Thank you. Me difficult questions and making me think about things. <laughs> thank you, Andrea. And thank you, Stephanie and Lena for your work on this. This is, uh, this is very exciting. I, and Mike, I he's can't not wait. Here, oh, and Mike and Mike. Yes. Everybody who he did, worked he on did this. the database parts. Yes, I, I told him that it was penance for writing the original reports and <laughs> which I think he he did. So, Mike actually did most of this and and yeah. based it on the simple reports interface. So I, I did Boyer. some and Jason Boyer. So I did some lining up oh, of yeah. things in the new pieces, but this is actually mostly them. Yeah. Well, hooray for Mike and Jason! It's excellent. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. All right, so um, we are going to be meeting at the Evergreen Conference. Well, that'll be our next meeting of the Reports Interest Group. And uh, I've, until then, we'll see you and we'll uh, be playing around with the Angular Reporter. So thanks, everybody. Yay. Put your feedback <laughs> on the bug, please. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye <laughs> now. <laughs>